you. Hi everyone, my name's Damis, and well, that light's bright. Um, and I'm presenting research today um, from one of my master's students at the Australian College of Applied Psychology. And um, really this was a, an exploratory um, study looking at the psychological correlates of internet use in an Australian sample. So there's no real consensus on when the exact date of the internet came into being, but sometime in the early to mid-1980s is thought to be uh, a reasonable estimate. And back then with Vinton Cerf's transmission control protocol, there was a linking of networks between a number of countries, including England, Sweden, Norway and the United States. And that was thought to be the birth of the internet. And from those first original network links, we now have a global worldwide web with virtually every um, planet, with every country on the planet linked together by a network which is dominated in use by the Asian region that you can see there with 1.2 billion users, followed by Europe, the Americas, Africa, the Middle East and Australia. When we look at the penetration rates, that is how many people in a specific region have access to the internet, we can now see that the distribution changes with almost 85% of people in North America having access to the internet compared to only 21% in Africa. Uh, nevertheless, with the development of more user-friendly computer technology and software, the use of the internet has dramatically grown between the years 2000 and 2014, seeing a worldwide increase of 676%. As we're all aware, there are many benefits associated with the internet, such as access to interpersonal communication and information sharing. However, there are growing concerns regarding the risks associated with internet overuse. And there's now suggestion that there could be widespread addiction to it, particularly amongst college and university students who are generally regarded to be the heaviest users of the internet. Internet addiction has been gaining attention in recent years, partly due to its potential inclusion in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. However, the terminology used to describe internet addiction is relatively inconsistent across studies um, because internet addiction suggests that people become addicted to the internet medium when in actual fact research suggests that the actual addiction is with the use of specific online activities such as internet gaming and internet gambling being the two best examples. Wanajak in 2011 proposed 10 diagnostic criteria for internet addiction which I've put up there and I've correlated these criteria with the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria for internet gaming disorder and that criteria is very much linked to addiction research that you would find with alcohol or drug addiction where the individual has urges to use the internet when they don't have access to it, a bit like experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Once you have access to the internet, you have difficulty controlling your use while you're on it. You have a preoccupation with using the internet. Over time, you might build up a tolerance to the internet such that you need to use it more and more each time uh, you're on it to reach the same level of satisfaction. And internet overuse will lead to various adverse side effects such as sleep deprivation, eye pain, back pain, and many other physiological and psychological conditions. The DSM-5 suggests that five or more of these criteria need to be met within a 12-month period that leads to significant impairment and significant distress. Epidemiological studies on internet addiction have reported uh, large vari variations in prevalence rates, although by far the largest numbers are consistently reported in Asia. Apart from cultural factors, the difference in prevalence rates may also be associated with differences in how internet addiction is defined and also the meth methodological way it's measured with some research using self-report questionnaires, whereas other research has used distinct diagnostic 
criteria like the criteria I showed on the previous slide. The other consideration that I should highlight is that most of the research has focused on segments of the population who are generally regarded to be the heaviest users of the internet, such as high school and university students. The pathway from uh, adaptive to pathological internet use is not clear cut. There's been no definitive research showing a cause and effect relationship. However, there are noteworthy characteristics that distinguish those who are addicted to the internet compared to those who are not. The literature shows that those who are addicted to the internet have higher rates of depression, dysthymic disorder, behavioural symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, including inattention and hyperactivity impulsivity, obsessive compulsive disorder and hostility and aggression. In general, the strongest associations are found between internet addiction and depression and the weakest correlation is between hostility and aggression. As I've alluded to before, the geographical distribution of this research is not homogeneous because a majority of the studies have been undertaken in Asia. Given that no study to date has found a correlation between internet addiction and social anxiety and very few studies have been conducted in an Australian sample of adults, this research was conducted to fill that gap and to address the three primary aims up there of examining the relationship between internet addiction and psychopathology, to examine the relationship between internet addiction and hours of internet use per day, and to investigate whether or not younger people, younger people show higher rates of internet addiction compared to older adults, considering that a lot of the previous research has been conducted in younger aged adults and high school students. So this study was a cross-sectional design using an online questionnaire format consisting of 255 participants. 169 of these were first year psychology students and another 86 were people from the general public. The sample ranged in age between 18 and 69 years with 74% of those recruited being female. You can see the measures that we uh, used up there, the internet addiction test, the depression, anxiety, stress scale, the adult ADHD self-report scale, and the social interaction anxiety scale. <clears throat> so looking at the results, we can see that participants mostly use the internet for the purposes of education, social media, and email, and the internet was least used for the purposes of adult entertainment, discussion lists, and internet dating. Participants from this point onwards for analyses were categorised into younger, between 18 and 39 years, and older, above 39 years, for further analyses. So looking at the bivariate correlation matrices, you can see that at least one variable in one of the groups, be it older or younger males or females, showed that internet addiction had a medium to strong correlation with depression, inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity, social anxiety and hours of internet use per day. And if you look at the overall um, variables for the total sample, which is the top line there, there was a significant correlation um, with all variables in internet addiction. Further analyses showed that younger respondents scored significantly higher on all independent variables compared to older respondents. 7% of the sample met criteria for internet addiction, which is consistent with previous prevalence data from Australia. However, contrary to expectations, there was no difference between the number of males and females who were deemed to be addicted to the internet. The 7% of those who met diagnostic criteria for addiction also scored in the clinical range for depression and the behavioural manifestations of inattention and hyperactivity impulsivity. We found that a number of variables were able to successfully discriminate between those who were addicted to the internet and those who were not, with those variables being age, depression, inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity, social anxiety and hours of internet use per day. 
The most robust predictors, however, were internet with internet addiction, with sin significant beta values in the regression model, were depression and time spent on the internet. Based on these results, it's plausible to conclude that people with internet addiction are at higher risk for comorbid psychopathology. On the other hand, it's also possible that psychopathology leads to internet addiction and future research will need to conduct longitudinal designs to distinguish the cause and effect relationships. The finding of a strong association between symptoms of ADHD and internet addiction is not surprising as individuals with ADHD can become easily bored and therefore thrive on the instant gratification which the internet can provide. Moreover, ADHD individuals often lack self-control which can in turn sustain addiction to the internet. We were able to show a significant relationship between social anxiety and internet addiction and so if people are overusing the internet, this may result in fewer opportunities to relate and interact with others in the real world. And this is potentially problematic because people with social anxiety suffer from isolation and may spend longer time online, which increases their propensity for dependency. Although not a primary focus of the present research, those who met criteria for internet addiction dedicated most of their time towards social media purposes, which was Facebook. In conclusion, this study supports previous cross-cultural research showing a link between internet addiction and psychopathology in an Australian sample. Future research will need to explore cross-cultural differences involved in developing internet addiction and comorbid psychopathological conditions. Psychologists who work with certain segments of the population may want to consider internet-related behaviours and their influences on psychopathology in their clinical practice. And I've put up there some addiction management strategies that clinicians may want to consider when working with people who might show signs of internet addiction, such as keeping a log of um, how often you use the internet, recognising what you're missing when you're online, such as contact with family and friends, finding support in the real world, um, reconnecting with others, um, cultivating alternate activities to do instead of going online, and recognising what your triggers are for using the internet. It might be a state of psychological... Um, you might be anxious, you might be depressed, you might be stressed, and recognising what those triggers are and uh, working, uh, using other alternative activities to and preventing from going online.